Okay, so we're going to take a look at the Pathfinder tool and the Shape Builder tool. So let's take a look where both of these are. First thing we want to do is we want to open up the Pathfinder tool. So the path, not the Pathfinder tool, uh, the Pathfinder window. So what we want to do is we want to go to Window, and we want to come on down and we want to open up Pathfinder, and there we have it. Now we want to look for the Shape Builder tool just so we know where it is. It's actually over on our tool panel and it is right here. Um, and if we come on down, it's right under the free transform tool or right next to it, right around the free transform tool about in the middle. And we can, you know, however we have our tool panel set. Let's start first with the Pathfinder window. What you're going to find is that both of these tools really do the same thing and uh, you might find that you like one over the other. Let's take a look. So we begin, we draw our shapes, grab our shape tool, draw a rectangle, I draw another rectangle. Now in order to make the Pathfinder tool work, you need to select the objects you want to apply the effect, the, the Pathfinder to. So in order to do so, I need to get my black arrow. Again, the keyboard shortcut is the letter V. Hold down Shift, select both of them. I both these select. Selected, now I can hit Unite. Okay, and they should have. Now we can see this is all one shape. It's one shape. I'm going to undo that. Okay, I could do my next one. The next one is to minus the front. Okay, so that's what that looks like. I'm going to undo that. The next one is to intersect. Voila. Right, now, and then the next one is to exclude where they overlap. So you can kind of get the sense of how you might work with something like that in creating a logo. And so many of the logos that we see um, have are based on shape and the relationship of different shapes, how they work with one another. All right, so let's actually go on down. And now what are you are going to find too when you do these effects? A lot of times they're going to be grouped. So if you ungroup it, let's see if it's seen. This says one shape. Or you're going to find actually that these will move independently of one another. So you actually put a little space in. Um, and, you know, keep working with it. All right, moving right along. Let's go to these commands at the bottom. We're going to find that they're going to work in a pretty similar way. Um, and again, what you find, I always have found with Adobe software, is that um, many times there are lots of different ways to do the same thing, to, to end with the end result. So it really is about what you feel the most comfortable with doing. So we begin. Let's actually start with a different. Now, if you ha grab an ellipse and you want it to be a circle, you just have to hold down Shift, and then you can get a perfect circle. All right, so um, I'm going to click off. I'm going to grab my Shape tool again. Um, I'm going to change the color. Let's change the color. Come on up in here. Let's go for that. Perfect. And again, learning the keyboard shortcuts, the keyboard to the shape tool is the letter L. So I have these two different shapes. Move this guy over and up, over and up. Okay, so again, in order to apply one of these effects, I need to select both of them, holding down shift to select both. You can also come grab your black arrow, draw um, a box around them. And this one right here is to divide. This is a cool one, I like this one. Um, now, a lot of times what you're going to find when you click off uh, is that you're, it might be grouped, but if you grab the white arrow, you can select one object at a time. So I could take this up and we can see what happened here was it divided. Okay, I can click this one. I'm just moving this with my arrow, so there's just a little bit of an implied line. And we can see, you know, as we look at this and we think too about a lot of logos that we see, a lot of logos that we see are really based on shape. Um, sometimes they're more descriptive, but a lot of times they really are based on the relationship of shapes and color. All right, so there we have it. Here is this one was to divide. All right, let's take a look at trim. We're going to select off. I'm going to grab my shape tool, which is again, I just did the keyboard shortcut which was the letter L. Let's grab a different one. Let's grab the rounded rectangle tool. Now, same thing, if you want a perfect square, you just hold down shift. Oh, okay, you just hold down shift, release your mouse, then release shift first. Okay, um, and 
do another one. And okay, it looks like I, I put a circle in, which is totally fine. Move this circle over. All right, so the next one that we want to take a look at is the trim. Okay, so let's take a look. So again, I need to select both of them. Trim. Again, if I grab my white arrow, I can see the relationship and the difference. Okay, that one would be trim. Uh, the next one, merge. Merge is going to be very similar to this first one of Unite. Uh, crop is going to be very similar to this one of Intersect. Okay, and then Outline. Outline is an interesting one too. So let's see if we grab the Outline one. Again, we'll draw two shapes. Why don't we do another change, change, change of the color. So we have a little bit of visual differences up here. Again, to get perfect circles, we hold down Shift. Like that color better. Okay, we'll draw another one. Okay, again, we need to select both. And I believe I was right at outline. All right, so now we can see the outlines of these two. Um, the last one would be to minus the back. Uh, and I think that that one's actually a lot like this one right here, minus front. This one would be minus back. So you could do either one of these if you wanted the front, whatever was on front and whatever was behind would disappear. All right, so now let's take a look. That was with the Pathfinder. Let's take a look at, hmm, how does the Shape Builder tool work? And what you're going to find with the Shape Builder tool is you're going to be able to do exactly what you did with the Pathfinder, um, but you'll actually will really make the decisions as you work through. So here goes. All right, so we're going to start again. Let's grab, let's grab our Polygon tool. I'm going to load a color in. Go for a little bit of orange. Okay, again. Um, so we have one shape. Let's change the color. Grab, draw another one. All right, I have a, a little bit of a different one, which is totally fine. Now, again, what we need to do is we need to select both of them. So I need my black arrow, shift click, and they both need to be selected. And then I can come and I can grab my Shape Builder tool. Now, um, in with the Shape Builder tool, you're also going to have your live paint bucket and your live paint selection. So we'll do those in a, a little bit later. But if I grab my Shape Builder tool, I can come on in and I can click this. Okay. Now, what happened was when I clicked this, they all... Um, change the same color. So that's fine. You can change it though. I could click this and click this. Now what, what has happened, what I've just done is just by clicking them, I'm going to probably need to ungroup them. Object. Oh, let's say, hold on. Let me click off. They were all selected. Okay. So just by selecting them, I divided them. Okay. Just by selecting them, I actually, I ended up dividing them. All right. So this was just like trim. All right, let's do let's do another one. Let's keep working with this shape builder tool. Let's move this guy down here, and let's try another one. Uh, so I'm going to put up some. Now, what I could do too is very quickly I could come on in and I could change the color of this. So even though when you pull them all together, um, the color changes, it's easy for it to uh, you can get get it back pretty easily. All right, so there we go. All right, moving right along, let's do some more experimentation with the Shape Builder tool. Come on in, click, click. All right, and let's actually, I want to just um, select this, edit, copy, edit, paste in front. All right, so just so I have a couple more of these that we can experiment with. So we have a couple. We have a, oh. All right, good. All right, so here it goes. If I wanted to work with my Shape Builder tool with this, and I have a couple over here, okay. 
Let's actually put these three together a little bit differently. I thought there was another one. All right, so we have a couple of these that we're going to experiment with. Here's our first one. Here's our second one. And here is our third one. So let's get started. All right, so again, first thing I need to do in order to work with the Shapeler tools, I need to select them. Um, I could come on over here. I could grab my Shape Builder tool, and then you know I could click and draw like so. And those two in the back now are intersected. I right, so remember that whole intersect. Okay, these two are now part of the same. Okay. Um, now let's see if I click on this when I pull it away. It has not divided it yet, and the reason why it hasn't divided it was because. Um, I did not apply the shape builder to it, but let's see if I was to click on to this again and hit the shape builder. So if I move this over, see, I can see that perfectly underneath it. Now, but what's going to find though is that this shape is still now right there and this shape is still right there. Okay, let's put that back. And I'm going to put this one back to where it was right there, perfectly over here. And again, the reason why that didn't happen was because I just applied the Shape Builder to those two shapes. Now, let's take a look. If I was to select this all again, and I was to come on in and grab my Shape Builder tool, and I was just to come on in, I can see actually all of these relationships, right? So I could click this. Oops. I could click that. I could click that. Now, what I've done, once I do that, I have applied the Shape Builder tool to that. So I could now I could grab need to grab my direct selection tool and I could start coming in here and deleting some different shapes and create you know really pretty interesting and cool design let's say I wanted to merge all three of these shapes well probably you already know how to do this again I just merged two shapes and then worked over here um, so all that I would do well, let's say I wanted to merge these first two shapes and then minus the front okay because we did minus front minus back I want to minus Actually, I want to minus the back. Okay, let, let's let's see how I can do that. All right, first thing I need to do, actually, I could even just select these top two shapes, right? I could say I want to merge those two and then minus the back. So I could grab those two, grab my Shape Builder tool, click, drag. Those two are merged. Okay. Um, actually, minusing the back would be really boring. So I'm going to change my mind on that. Um, what I could do though is I could I could intersect I could minus where they intersect and all I would want to do would be actually is I want to I want to select both of these okay and I want to minus where they intersect so I think you probably get the sense of how you would do that hit the shape builder tool and I could click right here oops again I need to deselect I need to grab my black arrow deselect and then just select that one object and it's gone so I've minus where it intersected now. I could take this, and we're seeing that these are reading as different colors. I could change this color. I could come on in. I could change this color. Okay, and there's the possibilities are endless. So voila. If I wanted to merge, I think that you're getting the sense of this, right? That we could do if we come on in, we could even trim this. We we started to we did that for with the trim, right? So let's just see. Um, you could minus the front. And really what the Shape Builder tool does is it lets you take the shape and it really creates these cutouts of the shape. You can merge them all together, you can delete different parts, you can move things around, you can create space in between your shapes. So there's a lot of possibilities that you can do at, as far as design goes to really push the boundaries of design. So thanks for listening. That is the Pathfinder and the Shape Builder tool.